Hi, welcome again. Today I'm going to show you how to add runtime virtual text support for a plushy file landscape. It's quite easy to do that. So let me show you some of the things you can do with the RVT. So here we have the mega scan rock. Here we have it. Uh, here we blend that nicely into my this sand area. So this is how it looks without any blending. You can see it's something you put it onto the CNI. It doesn't have any blending. So basically you can see it's, it's something you cut and paste. So, but you can put this and you can see it's clearly blend into the scene and yeah, it looks really nice. And then you can simply move this into any place you like. All right, something over here. It doesn't matter where you put this rock, it gets uh, ground information and blend nicely with the rock. I can increase this uh, slider and you can see how much uh, yeah, blend I need. And there are some other controls you can play around with, uh, get, the, get the look you really want. I think the defaults are decent. And also we have uh, something in interesting. For example, let me show you the performance impact of this landscape uh, without doing anything. So I can go to the optimization view mode and check share the complexity. So as you can see, we can see some uh, yeah, reddish um, over here. So basically we put more uh, landscape materials over here. You will get a reddish uh, look right? like this. And it's really hard to avoid uh, due to the system of landscape. Doesn't matter. It's not a problem brushify. Uh, it's, it's, it's normal. But we can fix that using runtime virtual textures. So let me uh, do a little trick. So here in my brushify material, we have something called use RVT cache. I'm going to click that. All right, now everything turn into green. So it doesn't matter how much of layer paint you do, how much layers you paint over here, it will have a, this greenish look. And if you go to the uh, the lit mode, you can see, yeah, you, you can see it, it has a decent look actually. So it, it's not the actual material. For example, if you go higher, you can see the repetition and this is how it looks like uh, the default one. And this is how with the RVT cache, but you get the idea. It's not the, the perfect in the look, but you get the performance. All right, uh, so let's see how you can do all these things into your landscape. This is a very simple brushify landscape and I have painted the sand material here. So now we're going to customize the landscape a little bit. In order to do that, we need to install open land into your project and check the description below how you can get open land into your project. All right, the first thing is we need to enable virtual texture support in this project. We can do that by going going into edit, project settings, and search for virtual texture. And here we have a section called uh, enable virtual texture support. I'm gonna click that. So basically I have already done that. You have to select the checkbox and restart your project. So that's all you have to do, okay? All right, I want to locate the, the master material of Brushify. So I'm gonna select my landscape from the world outliner and then I'm going to select the material. So here, this is the material instance. I'm going to double click that. Then let me arrange this in a nice way. All right. So now I'm going to scroll down this material instance so I can find the master material. All right. So then I double click on that. All right. Now we have the master material. So I'm going to put it over here so I have more room to work with. I'm going to change this a little bit. So I like to work with material attributes, so it's much easier to work, work with that. So first of all, I'm going to create a new node called make material attributes. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to copy all these wires into here. So I can simply click control button and I'm going to drag all these lines over here. I'm going to do this for each and every. All right, now we have already moved everything into this node, so I'm going to do some change in the material. So I'm going to select somewhere outside of this material. And from the details panel, I'm going to search for attributes. This uh, checkbox called use material attributes. I'm going to click that. So basically now we have a single wire. So I'm going to connect that into my material. All right, it should work. Now we are trying to write the, this material into a RVT. So for that one, we have a knot called open land RVT prepare output. So we have to do some stuff here. So that's uh, stuff is done by this knot. So I'm going to connect this into this material knot. So I'm going to create a new knot called runtime virtual texture output. So this is the knot 
actually runs these content into the virtual texture. I'm going to connect all these into this node, so which is pretty easy. So that's it. Now we need another functionality to actually so see uh, what's actually written in the virtual texture. So it's also we can think as a performance in improvement. Now I'm going to create a new parameter called static switch parameter. So I'm going to type it as a use RVD cache. So basically we can control this using our material instance. If this is true, I'm going to select new not call open LAN RVT sample. So basically this gets a copy of actual RVT. So we can use that instead of the actual material. So that's a performance improvement. So that one, we're going to use that. If not, uh, we can use the default. Yeah the my material and I'm going to connect this now to like that. So basically this is a simple setup. So let me expand a little bit. So we have this material attributes and we send that to the open LAN RVT prepare output. All right, then it will do some stuff and then it will uh, give some base color specular things. And then we move that into a runtime virtual texture output. So this is the actual virtual texture writing part. And then uh, we need to debug information. We need to see what's actually written into the virtual texture. We have done that using the this node. Open line RVT sample and we get that and we have static switch. We can uh, turn it on and off and see if what's the difference. That's all for the master material. I'm going to save this and let's see what has happened. All right. Now we need to add the virtual textures into the landscape. So I'm going to select my landscape from here and go to the details panel and search for virtual. So here we have some uh, plus icon. I'm going to click that and I'm going to add the first virtual texture, which is comes with open land height. And I'm going to select another one. And yeah, this one. All right. Now we have two virtual textures connected to the landscape. That's cool. After that, we are going to create virtual volumes and time virtual texture volumes, So we can actually complete the, all the virtual texture writing process. So from the place actors, I'm going to type virtual so this one so i'm going to drag that into my scene and doesn't matter where, where where you put that so from the details panel so here we have a section called virtual texture i'm going to select one of my virtual textures which is the first one height and then from the transform from bound section i'm going to select my landscape and i'm going to hit the set bounds button so basically it will uh, create a bounding box around my whole landscape usually this is working fine if this doesn't work try to scale it manually using this scale yeah option now we created this for the height uh, rvt so we're going to create another one uh, for the other rvt so i'm going to duplicate this one Control c Control v and go to the virtual text section and i'm going to select my the other one then i'm going to click the set bounds and we are good to go now we don't see any difference from the landscape because we don't know how to see this. So that's why we created this RVT cache option. So I'm going to search from the material instance called RVT cache. All right. And, and then I'm going to enable that. So now we can see the actual content of the virtual texture right in my, right inside my scene. So yeah, that's, we can compare. All right. Um, it seems that we get something uh, from the virtual texture, but it's not definitely what we really want because the quality wise it's uh, not that good what's happening here is pretty interesting because with rvds uh the camera depth doesn't really work so we need to fake that so that's why we see some yeah blurred uh, textures so we're going to fix that in order to do that we need to modify core function in brushify so let's do that go to my brushify directory and go to materials and select landscape and go to the function directory and there's a function called mf underscore landscape camera we're gonna replace some content over here all right we have something here so i'm gonna replace this one with a modified code in order to do that let me remove all these wires so it's really important to keep these input and output otherwise uh, you have to connect a lot of places so yeah just make sure so you keep these input and outputs without deleting them and we're gonna delete everything else all right let's select all these things and let's put them aside now we have a modified code i have put the link for this code uh, you can get it from this url and i'm gonna click this section and i'm gonna grab this i'm gonna copy this code and i'm coming back to my material editor i'm gonna paste this all right this is the code 
the modified code but now we have different input and outputs so i'm going to select i'm going to connect them to the original get the outputs and i'm going to connect this one over here this one over here and i'm going to delete the the new one so it will show in a warning that's fine all right so let's do that with the other two uh, inputs as well so i'm going to connect this one control put it over here control put it over here and i'm going to delete the new inputs we don't really need that this is exactly the same function that you have seen earlier but here we have to do some different things i said earlier that camera depth doesn't really work uh, with uh, rvts so this is the usual camera depth but here we for the rvts we use uh, the field of view and try to do some um, operations and try to try to get something uh, similar to this one uh, so this is something uh, recommended by epic this is not i come up with this is the uh, something um, actually everyone uses here we have uh, two parameters called rvt power and rvt scalar and this we need to tweak according to your landscape uh, in this case i have tweaked these numbers uh, to the classify so these are the numbers that works with this landscape uh, material so just try to play with these values so this can be accessed using the material instance so yeah that's up to you uh, but with Brushify, these two values are fine. Now everything's ready, let's click the Save button. So now we are using the RVT cache and you can see, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a good one. And then I'm gonna add a rock, static mesh, basically mega scan rock and try to blend with that. So let's add that. So I have a mega scan rock over here. Let me drop that into my scene. Uh, so you can see it's not clear, clearly blended. You can see it's something like you paste it on Photoshop without doing any stuff. Yeah, let's do some uh, blending. Uh, for that one, um, I need to find the master material of this uh, Megascan rock. So I have this rock selected on the world outliner. And this is the, the material. Basically, it's the material instance. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. And I'm going to select my, yeah, this is it. So this is the master material. So I'm going to modify this. I'm going to right click and search for open land. Here we have something called open land RVT blend with attributes. I'm going to select that. I'm going to connect this here and like this. So basically I'm going to connect this node at the end of the material. I'm going to click save. All right, now you go to your rock. Now we can see it actually blending really nicely. So let me turn off the real time off. So basically now we can see things in real time. So you can see I can put this a little bit down. All right, now you can see it's clearly blending to the scene. So if you need to bypass this one, we have a section in the uh, material instance called Open Land RVT Blend. So there are some options. Uh, first one is the blending intensity. And let me turn up blending. And this is what it looks like by default. And this is after we blend that. So you can see the difference. And there are some options. The number one thing is blend smoothness. And other one is blend normal sharpness. These are the two main parameters you need to worry about most of the time. And here we can control how much of height Actually, we need to blend. So basically, yeah, like this. All right. I think this is fine in this case. Normal sharpness is interesting. By default, we don't actually blend the, the sand into these, uh, these slope areas because it doesn't look good. Uh, that's why we uh, didn't do that. Uh, but if, we want, if you want to do that, you can actually do that. But you can simply increase this normal sharpness value. You can see it's applying over here. And it doesn't really look nice. Uh, but you, you can actually play with other settings and try to get something you want. But in this case, it doesn't look good. So I'm going to put that into the default. And I think this is this looks nice. And then um, you can see I can move this over to other places as well. So I put out the ground section. And you can see clearly blending uh, to this one. And I can increase the, yeah, you can see some uh, ground material over in, on the top of the rock as well. I like that it's pretty interesting all right this is it if you want to use rvt based blending options uh, with your brushify landscape this is the way to go all right see you soon with something interesting bye